Oh, I'm so excited to create an artwork today with all of my lovely colours that I've spent a long time collecting that I'm going to put to good Hang on, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, right there. Just a minute, pal. Hang on a second. You're me. No, I'm not you. I'm not a child. I'm an adult. Can you see? Yes, we have the same I'm an adult shirt, but I happen to have a tie and glasses. Anyways, if you were a real artist, you would be able to create an artwork using, using the colorless just blender a colourless blender. And you wouldn't need to rely on all of those actual Give it a go. markers. Why don't you give it a go? You know, the um, timing and execution of this interactive skit is really poorly executed. It is. It's really bad. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza, and ever since I started using Copic markers, the colourless blender was the most elusive and confusing of the markers. On its own, it's pretty useless. It relies on the colours of the other markers. Now, of course, if I'm going to try and use this to create an artwork, I'm going to need the ink of the other colours, but I'm not going to be using the other markers today. That is my challenge. But you know what isn't my challenge? Awkward segues. <laughs> Skillshare, the sponsor of this video, I want to thank them so much for sponsoring and those of you who haven't checked out Skillshare, you're really missing out. Skillshare have over 26,000 classes in illustration, drawing, design, animation and loads more. So whether you want to learn cinematography or you want to start a business and learn how the numbers stuff works, which I personally suck at, or even if you want to learn how to be a YouTuber or how to present to camera. I mentioned those two because I actually have two Skillshare courses I've made on those things, which are really great. And I encourage you to check out, link is in the card in the description. But honestly, Skillshare is an amazing resource. I can't recommend them enough. So make sure to go check them out. And while you can, the first 500 people to use that link that I provided in the card in the description will get two months of free premium Skillshare membership. But even if you miss out or if you just end up paying per month, it's only $10 a month. That's cheaper than any classes I've taken, any courses I've attended or visited, which I've done many, most of which average minimally $50 per session. So there's huge value for money there and it's a community that's only growing and getting more awesome by the day. Once again, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So how is this going to work? I have no idea. Let's play around with this. So I have here some blending card and I also have some uh, various inks in this tub. And what I'm going to do is just play around with ways that I can use the colorless blender as the only way of applic- applicate- applicate- applying the various ink and the colors from the other markers and I'm gonna see if I can come up with enough of an efficient method of doing so that I will be able to then attempt to create an entire artwork. So let's just start off with a little bit of little bit of a marker and a little bit of a colorless blender. Again, the rules are I cannot touch the paper with this marker, nor can I directly apply a various ink without using the colorless blender. So the first thing that comes to mind is sort of like, I don't know if you've used the chameleon markers. They use like a gravity based thing where you pour the color in just by like holding the tips against each other. And look at that, there we go. So that does sort of work. Now this colorless blender is quite dry. So, you know, that's not ideal. Fortunately, I happen to have these little tubes of various ink. Then the next question is of course, does this ruin your colorless blender markers? You can see that I have that green on the tip. Well. Probably. I don't know. <laughs> I've never done this before and there's probably a reason people don't do this. But here's what I'm going to assume and attempt. I'm going to put some various ink just to... It's got a lid thing in it. And I'm just going to tap the uh, colorless blender in there and uh, if I scribble off on a different part of the page and then just draw, very slowly it does remove the ink from the tip and the, the uh, front part of the marker chamber. My next question is, can I apply and blend two colors using just one colorless blender marker? I know the sort of go-to thought might be, what if I had a whole bunch of different colorless blenders? My theory is I should be able to sort of like suck and blend several with the one. That sounds a little seedy, but you know what I mean. All right, let's try the uh, gravity application. 
Let me feed on your soul. Oh, wait, yep, yeah, it's quite strong. So slow and steady and I'll work towards a stronger color. And now I haven't removed any of the red aside from just applying it until it gets a bit weaker. But now I'm just gonna try and go straight to the yellow. Let's see how this goes, shall we? Okay, so we got the yellow. And just bit by bit, I'm transferring just a little bit of color and gently working it in. The blending, it's sort of working, but because I'm using a colorless blender, which in and of itself sort of breaks down the colors of Copics, the more I apply it, the, uh, the more desaturated and watery the applications of color look. However, that does make for a bit of a watercolor look, and as you can see, <gasps> I just, um... Uh... I just did a thing. That's sort of a cool like result, considering I didn't even know if this would work. Ha, 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 I'm an idiot. Who attempts this crap? So that to me is a proof of concept. That means I can do that, which is cool. There is one more form of application I do want to attempt or just see how it goes. And that is directly using the marker in a little puddle of various ink. Here I have blue and red various inks. I'm just gonna put these down in here. Let's start off with red. And I'm just going to try and gradient across. Look at that. It's like, that went down deep. That went, pfft, wow. That's sort of cool. So it does sort of gradually mix with the color that was already in the tip. And then I can blend between them and get to a rich blue. So this sort of acts like a paintbrush. That's pretty cool. All right. Okay, cool. Well, that's really good to know. That is a, that is a dirty tip. <laughs> Mind out of the gutter. God damn it, you guys. And we're demonetized. <laughs> So how long does it take to clean the tip? <laughs> For God's sake. These are legitimate questions related to colorless blenders. I have a feeling I'm gonna ruin my only two colorless blenders by doing this. <gasps> oh my God, I have one of these. This is a big colorless blender. Yay, I can ruin this one too. Great, okay. <laughs> well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have tested our materials and I have a pretty clear idea as to what we're looking at here. That was our double and our experimentation phase, ladies and gentlemen. Next comes the dive, where we dive deep into the art. Why does everything I say sound bad? Ah, wish me luck. And there it is, I gotta admit, this turned out cooler than I expected. I thought the, uh, the using colorless blenders only to apply the colors would be a pretty unworkable way of working. And it wasn't the most convenient. I would never do it again, really, cause there's no point. And I've definitely, definitely ruined these markers. Some worse than others, but in particular, the chisel tips were the most useful to apply things with, but good Lord.
Yeah, I need to buy some new color, let's blend it. But in the meantime, this is the final outcome and I'm really proud of it, so proud of it in fact that I'm actually gonna put it up on the print shop. So if you guys like it yourself, you can get it in high resolution, you can get a framed print, you can get a poster print. They're really high quality prints and uh, if you like this artwork of the floating island, which by the way was uh, suggested by Twitch, I, I actually created this live and they gave me some different things for them to vote on and they chose floating islands and this was thanks to them. And if you want to join future streams you can of course click the link in the card in the description to join and follow me on Twitch and I'm also really happy that Skillshare are a sponsor of this video and this channel they've actually worked with me over like three or four years at this point and they're such a great resource in the content that you can follow to learn today and also if you have skills you want to teach you can go and teach on Skillshare and you can be seen and found on Skillshare a lot easier than you can on YouTube and share your skills with other people and even make a bit of money on the side so if you haven't go check out Skillshare the link once again is in the card in the description and those lucky 500 of you who use that link first will get two months of free premium Skillshare membership but once again it's only 10 bucks a month so it's not a lot to fork out for a huge amount of resources to learn and create your own artworks illustrations I love the results I hope you enjoyed it make sure you hit that like button if you did subscribe to draw with Jazza for more fun with art and creativity thank you so much for watching and until next time I'll see you later Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there, and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now, and until next time, I'll see you later.